Hello, everyone. Hello. Let's make sure everybody can hear us. Everything is good. Uh, just doing sound check. Make sure everybody can hear me. I think I've got this down now, but Taparto says it's all good. Thank you, Taparto. Hello to a mask. Hello, Poner. Music man. Just a little KLC. And everyone else in chat, welcome. It is the Dungeon Cooldown. Uh, I am your host today, uh, Ron Ogden, as you may know me as the DM here uh, on the Dungeon Run for this little uh, main group of characters. And today, uh, the wonderful, absolutely uh, uh, beautiful human being, uh, Carrie Lee Cartwright joins me. She plays Coco on the show. Hey guys. Uh, thanks for joining me uh, today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, as always. How you doing today? It. Great. I'm doing oh, great. I Yesterday, uh, <laughs> so we were supposed to do the cool down yesterday, as many people know. Uh, I must apologize. I had to push it back. Um, I got zero hours of sleep Sunday night. Like, literally zero hours of sleep. And so... Um, I just was not going to be in a good were headspace. You like, uh, <laughs> were you like up knitting? Like what were you no, doing? No, like I was like I was trying to sleep. Like I literally Playing Zelda. Was just oh, okay. No, I was tired and in bed and trying to sleep. I just could not sleep. Um, oh. So I, I don't know what was going on. Meds, as usual, I'm sure, is something to do with it. Um, but all good now. Got a good night's sleep last night. Went to bed really early. Uh, woke up at a, at a you know fairly early actually like so 30 minutes ago <laughs> yeah like literally woke up 30 minutes ago uh no i woke up at like seven this morning uh, uh and, and and helped my wife get ready for work um so uh welcome everyone this is the cool dungeon cooldown it is brought to you uh by the generous donations of our patreon so thank you very much if you're part of our patreon if you're not part of our patreon you should consider it. Uh, some changes are being made, and you've already seen some of that after every show. We are now including uh, a new section. I've forgotten what we've called it uh, because my brain. Did was we that come? Way. Did we? Did we have a name for it? Already? I don't know that we actually had official name for it yet. Uh, but it was it is, so fun. It was, it was a lot so of fun. fun. I'm so excited to do it again. Uh, but you will be seeing um, essentially 15 to 20 minutes of live reactions from the cast. Uh, after the show uh, on what just happened and, and get a feel for what they experienced and, and, and a little bit of a look behind the scenes. Again, all of this changes coming about because all of you helped us understand what it was you enjoyed and missed about the show. So more uh, short rest. Thank you, Angel Devilson. That is exactly what we called it, the short rest. Uh, oh, our short yeah. rest uh, will be coming out every week. So uh, any, any level of Patreon gets access to that. So make sure... Uh, if you are not uh, a member of our Patreon, you go and join. Uh, more changes coming soon to the Patreon. Uh, some new uh, things going to be thrown into the mix. Uh, so uh, look on, uh, keep a lookout for those when we announce them as they come up. So I'm so excited welcome. to hear about it because I don't know. <laughs> well, that's just because uh, we haven't had time to talk to you yet. We've been <laughs> off. Uh, you know, we had our week I, off. I have, so, and I've been uh, gone. Yeah, and you've been gone. So, but they're. We will catch you up soon, I promise. Amazing, um, amazing. Uh, let's see, anything? Oh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, the show's tomorrow, we have a giveaway from the generous uh, the generous uh, Dogmite. Uh, we're giving you away one of their Traveler's Roll Boxes. Uh, if you check out our Twitter or uh, our uh, TikTok, you can see uh, beautiful pictures of that thing or join us tomorrow uh for the giveaway uh watch the show and during the intermission we'll be giving away that beautiful piece of wood uh pieces of wood because there's more than one but uh you could be the lucky winner of that robot so make sure you come on by um and i think that's pretty much it for the updates and getting ready for the show uh carrie how how's how's your week been uh it's been good i'm getting acclimated to being back into in town i've been i've been away in my hometown dealing with some family stuff and uh so yeah i'm just kind of getting re-acclimated it feels really good to be back home yeah. and with my cats and oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> well it feels really good to have you back at the table too uh oh, it feels you, great to be back at the table uh, yeah you and i got a uh about 20 30 minute one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh -huh. show and i really yeah. enjoyed that it was a lot of fun to get back to me so. too it was fun i and like that fun. we're also still playing with the lights and the like the yeah. how we're framing things it's pretty fun so yeah i mean that these are you know things that we get to do uh with with uh, changing the studio and, and finding ways 
ways to make the show better and better and better. Um, mm-hmm. So we'll be seeing more of that in the coming weeks. Uh, Wonderful. Which I'm excited about too. Um, all right, so let's just get to our questions right now. So uh, for those of you who are watching, if you did not uh, take advantage of our Patreon posts and getting us some questions or posting questions in the Discord, then please feel free to leave them here in the chat and we'll get to them as we can. Um, and uh, all right, away we go. So first, uh, from Tapartos, Carrie, what do you think of Coco's main goal is now that she has seen the other side of things, death, etc.? Uh, main goal, I would say, let me see, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, (laughs) my first initial reaction was to get back there, which is a weird answer, but like, I want, I think Coco wants to know more about what that was. Um, yeah, kind of more questions than answers really. And the only way to kind of find out those answers is to go back and, you know, taste the dirt as Coco would. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Yeah, I I think it was, um, it was super interesting. Um, Coco hasn't really gotten a chance to tell the group yet, or if she, they will tell the group, Yeah. but it'll be interesting to see how the group takes that considering they believe that this place is the place of death. Um, and they're not wrong, right? We've already talked about this is limbo- limbotic, as I uh, the, the limbo. <laughs> it's a it's a place of uh-huh. limbo. Um, but what is what does true death look like? Um, and, and you know, uh, clearly Coco has had a, a little bit of a taste of that, um, even if it was just the surface. Um, but it was very, I thought it was very fun to to play that with you. Uh, and yeah, I appreciate it was really you fun. being. I appreciate you being so um, generous and and not panicking when I made it clear that you were dead. Uh, it was it was very nice to see that you're like okay, let's just go with this, let's play with this, let's see what happens. So that was. I mean, fun. I kind of feel like I was playing out what it would be like in real life. Not that I'm looking to die, but I also am like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, they have those like in movies and things where somebody's dead. They're like, wait, am I dead? Or they're like. Can I go? And then you get to go back. I don't know. Just all the things. So lots of questions of the unknown, you know? Yeah. So um, I think it was the first time, though, that Coco wasn't fully like, I think there's been some fear with um, Failshin. And so that kind of didn't feel like that was there this time. But I think it's because we had such a concentrated amount of time and I didn't have like other group members saying like, yes, let's say yes to this thing. Let's keep going. And so I just kind of got to sit in it, which was kind of nice. That was it. And it was interesting to, to, to play that because that is really the first time Faelshin's ever gotten a one-on-one with anyone, Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, that we've seen. Um, And it's, uh, it was really interesting to play that route uh, because tactics change. You're absolutely right. Not just for you, but for him too, right? For Faelshin mm-hmm. as well. Uh, it's much easier when there's more because you can entice the right people to get what you need. But when it's one-on-one, it's like, okay, well, I have to really focus on what this person wants and try to find a way for my goals to match theirs. Um, and you can see that, you know, Faelshin's just deals it. He's the god of deals, right? Like, I mean, to put it to put it any uh, any other way, he's the god of deals, and I think that's sure. become very cle- clear. Um, uh, it's an uh, interesting so. uh, interesting title. The god of deals. That you called him a god. Well, I you know that's me more of like. Okay, <laughs> that's. I, I don't want to confuse. Like, is this yeah. Like, is this like a? <laughs> no, and I think we've actually had we've seen that in the show, right? Like, there's even sort of a, this up in the air question about. Well, what is a god? Are mm. are the avatars gods? Are they avatars? You know, and every every character has their own opinion, right? It is clear that Cristobal believes that the avatars are not gods; um, mm. that they are they are some sort of lesser form. Um, so it's it's super interesting to me to to watch all of that too, because I know what's going on, and I know what my my. Um, my kind of concentration is and i love that you say that angel devil since our angel devil is that he's the crowley from super he's like crowley from supernatural absolutely <laughs> sort of the base of that character's creation and where he came from i'm a big fan of, of crowley from that show um clearly a different character because he's got his own he's not as tied into things or at least as we know but uh very very much sort of based on that kind of concept of a of a crossroads demon type thing. Um, so when you start talking about gods and demons and, and Feywild, uh, you know, um, 
the 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 archons of the Feywild. Like there are what becomes a god and what isn't is very thin line, right? And it's a gray area. So um, I think that's kind of beautiful that the characters are doing that naturally because that's what I was hoping would occur. Um, so many of our written stuff, there's like, no, this is a god, this is a thing, and this is that. And I like more of like, well, I don't really know what that is. I just know it's a lot more powerful than me, uh, and I therefore have to deal with it, um, which is magic in general, I think. Yeah. So uh, it's been very fun watching all of you sort of uh, handle that. Have you, been, have you ever been stumped by something that's happened at the table in this campaign where you're like, oh, uh... Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it, this is this is part of what keeps me up at night. Is like I have to try to like always mm. think what you might do, uh, mm. or at the very least, it's not even what you might do. What has happened, and then what will happen if something occurs. Now that makes it a little easier that I can compartmentalize that because then you can make any choice that you want, and then I can just sort of the what you, choices you make isn't going to change what they've already done. Uh, it'll only change what they do going forward. So I know sure. what they've already done, and then I just got to, well, how much of it, what the choice that you just made, do they know? Uh, you know, do they know? Uh, and if they did, how much they know? Who gave them information? That kind of stuff. It then helps me really sort of lay the bricks down. Uh, we're getting close to the end of this sort of arc, uh, this, this City of Glass arc. Um, so it's getting easier for me to, like, the number of options you have is shrinking each each uh, episode very quickly. So uh, it's getting easier for me to sort of anticipate what you're going to do. But set, having said that, uh, you know, we've got Otto, who is just a being of chaos. Uh, we've got Rhea, who is a being of secrets. And then we've got you, who's also a being of secrets, but it's sort of in a different way, where you're not really knowledgeable of your own secrets, right? You don't even really understand them. You're, you are as ignorant of the secrets as the audience is. So the audience is with you. Whereas with mm. Rhea, Rhea knows what her secrets are, and the audience is trying to figure them out. And I love yeah. that sort of duo. And now that you're back, we can play more with that. And I love that. Um, I'm cool. really exciting, really excited to uh, to do that. Yes, everyone, want to let you know, we, uh, Morgan went and updated a bunch of our night bot prompts. Uh, so, um, so there will be some of that. We've been changing some of the uh, Patreon uh, wording and some of the titles here on, on our uh, Twitch page. We've been doing a lot of updating of the stuff uh, lately, and that will be continuing to happen in the next couple of weeks as we continue to try to make this show better and better and better and better channel excuse me not just show channel and uh, better and better um okay so next question carrie okay um has coco matured since her death and resurrection has her insight into her deal with queen mab changed hmm read that to me again yeah, absolutely. This is but a, do it this... in a different voice. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can certainly do it. <laughs> has Coco matured since her death and resurrection? Has her insight into her deal with Queen Mob changed? I don't think so. Mm. Cool. Uh, yeah. I think. Yeah, I don't think so. No. Mm -mm. Uh, so I know you, that sounds a little weird, but I don't think so. Uh, no, great, yeah. So, uh, so just to lay this out, Coco still feels strongly about the deal that they made with Queen Map. Well, I think that Coco uh, is maybe not very comfortable with the deal they made, mm -hmm. um, and so maybe we'll try to figure out a way to get out of said deal. Uh huh. <laughs> Okay. Um, or or find some way around it. Yep. Sort of like talking to Felshin, yeah. like you know, like wanting to know the exact language, like kind of picking apart a little bit, like <laughs> what they were asking of yeah. Coco, and just sort of be like, so are you meaning this, or are you meaning that? Because you right. said this, but right. there's also this other hole that you didn't cover. Like you know what I mean? So yeah, I think it's sure. a little bit of that. Great. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's that's super exciting. Um, I, for me, uh, I have a question for you. Okay. Uh, some other of the cast have already sort of talked about that they're the the glow worms in the cavern. 
Mm -hmm. um, they believe are somehow tied to the worms that Queen Mab gave you. I mean, that would make sense. Yes, but (laughs) what? But I would. I also identify it when you brought out the worms in the City of Glass. They did not react at all to the soil. Uh huh. And only reacted to Rhea. Yeah. So I'm curious. What is your what if? What is your belief and what is Coco's belief of the connection of these two things? I'm not sure if Coco has made the connection yet, but I oh. sort of feel like it has something to do with the obsidian. Okay. Uh, sort of like being another ingredient in the mm-hmm. activation of For sure. of uh, how the worms got to be this like quite this glowy and this big yeah. and crazy. So, right. yeah, that's kind of cool. what I'm thinking. Very cool. Uh, all right. Well, I'll take that into consideration uh, moving <laughs> forward. Um, there's a question for me from Tapartos. There's two questions for me from Tapartos, and then one from Kitty Scritches. Tapartos <laughs> uh, asks, "What has surprised you the most over the last few epito- episodes that the cast has done?" Um, what surprised me the most was the not chasing of, um, n- not chasing. Um, good lord, my brain cannot handle names right now for some reason. It's uh, okay. It's. What do they look like? Uh, Netzir. There it is. Ha I knew mm. I'd get it. Uh, not chasing Netzir when they had the option. That was super surprising to me. Um, I. And, and in fact, I think if you go back and watch it, it caught me a little off guard because I was like, well. Cool. Uh, so the choices there were not something I expected, but had still sort of planned for even if I didn't plan specifically for that that choice to be made um, only because I knew what Nazir would do and what they had been doing um, so for me it was very cool I was surprised by that but uh, I think it turned out pretty cool it, it meant some other things went down that they wouldn't have necessarily seen um, had they chased after Nazir. But then, of course, on the other side, there are some things that they didn't learn that they could have had they chased Nazir. So uh, I thought it was super, that was, to me, very surprising. Surprising? Um, or did you yeah. kind of think like, I thought, come on, come if on. It was me, if it was me, I would have chased Nazir down. Like, that would have been me. Like, as Ugo, like, if Ugo was part of this, Ugo would have been like, no, we're going to, you look like him. We got to find him. He's involved. He knows some things. Um, but the fact that y'all were like, they were, I mean, you weren't there, so, but like, they were like, no, we'll just, we'll let him go. Like, let him go. We'll, we got, we have to get, which made sense, right? It made sense that they needed to go get the thing that they wanted to go get. Chris Paul, dad's body is very important. Uh, and clearly we saw why. Um, but also had they not done what they did, right? Had they not gone uh, to there, what happened with Coco might've been completely different, right? What, how they, uh, all of that would have been, I think, completely different. So just to me, that's the that's what D and D really is. That's what TTRPG play like this really is. Is the story changes because you make decisions that you have no idea would change things, and I don't even know they would change things until we get there. Right? It's like, oh right, that would have been different had they gone and chased the Zier because they would have figured this out before they got there and all this kind of stuff. But then you lose all those really. The best moment for me in the last couple of episodes has been Otto when they walked in and you're on the table at at, <laughs> at just unconscious, and it was just like I'm about to stab somebody. Like that to yeah. me, you cannot. That, those are the kind of interactions in the TTRPG play that are really hard to write in, right? Those things are, they only happen because of the improvisation of the characters' uh, choices. And I lo- that's what I really, really loved it. Love about you know what's weird? I was not surprised that I was dead. No? Yeah, like, I don't know why I wasn't that surprised. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, this makes sense. <laughs> but then also I was like, but yeah, I'm going to get to go back because this is right. like a campaign. We're going right. to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe, yeah, I don't know. There's a certain um, plot armor you have, right? There's a certain amount of plot yeah. armor where it's like, I might be dead, but I'm not really dead. Yeah, I'm that's just why it was so a, lovely. It was so yeah. lovely that like Serena and the rest of the cast and stuff had such a huge reaction to seeing yeah. Coco dead because <laughs> it was surprising. <laughs> Well, and, and that's what I loved is they really dove into that. Well, like, well, what would I do if my if my friend I knew and was looking yeah. for was dead on a table? Like, that's yeah. uh, that's that to me was really impactful. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. love that kind of stuff. Like when you play those moments that, and I, and I really think that's what the audience really loves. Those moments of like, yeah, I would be that way. Like I'd be torn apart if, you know, if I walk into a room and you were dead, Carrie, I would be torn asunder. You know what I mean? It'd be like, what's going on? Now we don't have the benefit of having gods that can bring people back to life and all that kind of stuff. But still it would be that, that true, like, what? Oh, no. I think, yeah. I think, um, Coco's response is pretty similar to what Otto's was, which was like, I need to hurt someone now because mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I'm mad about this. Yeah. Um, but my own response would probably be different. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, not a crit fail like, says I was. More like yours. Go ahead. Uh, not a crit fail says I was half expecting Coco to be dead, and it still really got me when Ron said the words out loud. Oh. Um, yeah, I, the cast had. I did not warn them. I even thought about warning them because I know that these things can be sort of heavy, and I know mm. people care about the characters, and especially their friends' characters. And I and I didn't want it to feel like I was punishing anyone. I wanted it to be very mm. like this is story driven and, and purposeful, and I think really, um, 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 I really think that that helped out. So Chris yeah. Sketches uh, asked a question. I'm finally catching up with this chapter. I'm really enjoying the moments where the players have had a chance to slow down and actually interact with each other. My mm. favorite force card was the one that Rhea had sh- to share something about a person they met and everyone shared a secret that no one else knew. I think these kind of interactions are what I miss most from season one. Can we have more? Um, Kitty Scritch is also saying here in chat, I asked my Patreon question before finishing the latest episode. So much incredible interaction on the latest on the last episode really felt it. And Kitty Scritch is, I hope you um, will go back and watch this entire uh, arc again because I've been very much concentrating on that um, I, I have the story I've got all the stuff I- in the background but I'm letting them go at the pace that they want to go at uh, and letting them discuss and interact because none, all of the stuff I throw at them has no weight unless they are sharing how they feel about what's going on and interacting in meaningful ways and I think the cast has really dove into that this this arc uh, and I it just makes me want to to, to see more of it as well as a DM. Like, if my job is I'm sitting quietly and listening to what my players are saying, I feel like I'm doing a good job, right? Like, if I'm not talking and they are and they're doing all the work, that means I've laid a foundation where they can live in and believe in and and let them be the storytellers from that, from that. So, mm-hmm. um, it, it was, it, it, I love this. I love this. Uh, what has been happening in this place. It feels yeah. much more organic than before. Mm-hmm. I think in the first the first chapter, is that what we're calling it? Chapter? Yeah. It chapter. was uh it was um necessary in the way that if you're trying to get your bearings and you don't know where you are, a lot of the questions are questions that truly kind of can't be answered. Right. Otherwise the show would be boring. It would be boring for our characters if we just got the answer. You know what I mean? It's it's now I feel like we're seeking yeah. answers. Right. Before it was understanding what was going on, like yeah. figuring it out, like the panic of what is happening. And, and now why? You, and why? Why, why is are this we happening? here? Yeah. Right. Now yeah. you're getting to the point where it's like, okay, we've got a little bit more information. We understand a little bit of what's happening. Let's deep dive on the specifics of what's happening in these moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a yeah. purposeful like arc, right? That's a mm-hmm. purposeful story change. Uh, to sort of get you prepared for the for the different acts that we're sort of building in here. So, not a crit fail says, and uh, coming out of the secret room that we as watchers had seen, but the cast hadn't, and throwing your friend is dead was delicious. And I I think somebody mentioned it earlier, but you being like your head on the desk and just being there in that moment and and unconscious. Mwah was so oh, good. That's good. So good. I so wanted to be, I was like, gosh darn it. Why did I lay down on the table? I can't see what's going on. And I was like, I really want to know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. it was beautiful what you did. So thank you for oh, that. Thanks. Um, thank you for that. Oh yeah. I mean, it was, a, it was, a, it was a thank you for blast. killing me <laughs> <laughs> for purpose. Um, yeah. <laughs> Always. Says, one last question for me here, and then we'll go to uh, chat for questions. Okay. But uh, Ron, how do you turn your DM brain off at night so you can sleep? Uh, I find myself thinking of scenarios and things I still need to do for my campaign, and they tend to cut into sleep a lot. 
Uh, I can say that that definitely happens to me a lot as well. I've already had that problem even before this show. Uh, I tend to have an overactive um, imagination and brain, and so that's where a lot of my insomnia that I've suffered through my entire life has always come from, um, and part of what happened you know, on Sunday night as well. Wasn't tied to this show, although I did spend some time, because you inevitably do. Um, how do I turn it off? I don't. Like, I really don't. It's always in the back of my head, right? This is... A, this is m this is part of my working life and so because it's part of my working life just like the things that you do in your working life are probably always on your brain uh, this is always on my brain um, and in addition to that not just the story I'm telling but I'm also a producer of the channel and so a lot of like changes to the channel uh, other stuff that are just even beyond this uh, specific story are always on my brain as well um, so I have a I have a hard time sometimes uh, turning that off um, is it but is, is it helpful to like give yourself any boundaries around that? Uh, it I mean, has been, yeah. but but my brain doesn't like those boundaries, right? Yeah. It always looks for ways around them because it gives this brings me so much joy that yeah. uh, sometimes it'll seek these things uh, because mm. of that reality. So it's so tr it's so tricky, right? Because like yeah. say I'm I'm writing a script or something, I find it so joyful when my brain does just take off. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to shut this off. Yeah. But I also have to get some of this out. Yeah. So it's like, I'll just turn on my voice memo. I don't know if you yeah. ever do that. And I'll I just do. like say it, you know. Yep. And then they have like, Serena uses that program where you can, oh no, hers is writing and it turns into notes. But you can, it, it'll just transcribe what you're yeah. what you're saying or whatever. Yeah, so I use a lot of those too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, like g just getting it out into the world, hearing myself mm -hmm. say it sometimes can help. But I have just you know it's the adhd mania kind of stuff it's just mm. it's as much as i wish i could have more control over that you know it's like some people are like oh just just turn on some white music and uh put some eye mask on and go to sleep it's like that's that's not really how it works though sometimes so uh <laughs> i do appreciate huh. that because they're just they're being loving yeah. and helping but it's also yeah. one of those where it's hard to describe sometimes because it is tied to illness uh, well, so, so let me tell you a list of things I think you should try. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd be welcome to hear any and all ideas because I've been suffering through it for so long. Anything that oh, works I is welcome to come, uh, but it does occur on occasion. So, yeah. um, Fail Waffle says, Carrie, you are wonderful and a joy to watch. Just wanted to say thank you for all that you uh, do. Fail Waffle, thank you. Waffle, thank you. So That's so sweet. Thank you so much. Um, Taparto says, yep, three, four hours of sleep for me in the last 20 years. Same. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Hello, uh, we have a Josephine here in the chat with us, and they have a question for you, Carrie. Oh, How are you so freaking incredibly talented and engaging <laughs> and an absolute joy? Tell us the secret. Uh, it's a secret. <laughs> Perfect. Can't give hey, away Josephine. the secret. God, I love Josephine so much. Like, what a freaking delight. Am I right, you guys? Oh, Just, man. Like, mwah. Yeah. <laughs> such an incredible uh person to have as part of the cast yeah. we are very very lucky yeah um, i left too in our group in our group chat like off of here like we it's interesting just like i love how how seamlessly everything's become like we just chatter all day long yeah about yeah. things or like does anybody have this thing i can borrow or like yeah whatever just like it just feels so like Truly, we've only ever we've known each other not for very long, but it just feels like easy. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, no, I know. I, I exa hear exactly what you're saying. It's an easy yeah. interaction on or off screen, and it feels genuine on and off screen. Mm -hmm. And I think that really plays from my experience with the Heroes of Bingo in Ep in in our first season. It was the same way. Uh, we got mm -hmm. into the chat and it was very much like we're, we're friends and close and hey can I borrow this do you have time to help me with this um, and I love that I, I mm -hmm. personally very much love that and uh, I'm very very thankful for uh, as you guys have seen me and heard me say many times I'm very humbled and thankful <laughs> for you guys to be at, at the table you guys I don't know if any of the Patreon people know but Ron probably jumps in our group chat I don't know, at least a couple times a week. And it's just like, I know I've told you guys this before, but I just am so grateful. And I, and I just, I love our group and I, I just really appreciate you all. And I love you so much. And it's just, and there's just so much like love and, and fun chatter. And it's, it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> I, you know, I, if you spend any, here's the thing, we spend more time with the people we work with than many other people in our lives. 
And so it's yeah. always been for me to be like, it's important to have good relationships with the people you work with. Um, yeah. and, and personal. Now, you know, if you don't like that, that's totally okay. I totally respect that and totally understand that. I'm the kind of person who's like, look, we spent a lot of time together. I need to know that I, you know, we have to have a good relationship. I need to like you in some ways. I need to feel close to you in a way just so that we can work well together. Um, especially something like this where we're being so, it, you know, we might be other characters, but we are very, you know, we're in intimate moments together. We're, we're in one-on-one -on -one scenes. You know, there's one thing I, I've said this a lot about improv is it's scary. And the reason it's scary for me is because it's you and that other person and you're alone. There might be other people watching, but you two are alone doing that thing. And that is very, very an intimate situation, right? We have to trust one another to get through it. And I think that's a lot of the reason why some people are afraid to do this kind of stuff sometimes is because that's very vulnerable. It puts you in a vulnerable place. And so for me, it's very important to have like a, you can be vulnerable with me. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to make any calls on who you are as a person. I'm here to enjoy who you are as a person and, and, and make you look brilliant. That's my job here. Um, so I try to do that as best I can. Uh, yeah. It seems I get uh, the indications that I get from the from the cast is that I'm doing well. So that's what makes my heart joyful. You're doing very well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> you did miss your answer to the question, uh, Josephine. They went into the garage and lost their connection. Um, <laughs> what? Morgan Peter Brown, wait a minute. We have to like each other? You don't have to, I guess. <laughs> Just It's going to play out in the scenes, though, I feel. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then Fail Waffle says, yeah, rapport and s relationship is super important in a role-playing game, uh, job or for fun. Absolutely learned that in my 20 years of doing this, that that rapport and relationship is important regardless. Again, I think really because of the core of those, you're in a vulnerable place with someone. Uh, and you need well, to feel I, like you can trust them. Yeah, and I do think that, like, you know, we're all we're all adults, um, yeah. and we like to play, and we there's a lot of gratification in playing well together. And I I can see that we've all made a really con like a concerted effort to have relationships outside of Dungeon Run yeah. um, as individuals, like with yeah. one another. And yeah. and I just it's so great. And I hope the community. Uh, like has that too you know what I mean like yeah, oh yeah with each yeah yeah you know <laughs> yeah absolutely um very much I think the yeah. you know the community is even saying that we hear people in the community like not a crit fail says all that love can be felt through the screen and in the mm -hmm. game um they really can feel that and I think it comes out in the acting right it absolutely comes yeah. out in, in the acting yeah. that you do it oh and, I was and, also saying though I hope that they as a community also like reach out to each other off of TDR oh, stuff and yes. like, you know, just right. find out about each other. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if, uh, I can tell you with great detail, especially uh, with our first season, um, Fail Waffle uh, being very uh, sort of important in that situation where, yeah, they're close as a community for sure. Um, Amazing. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I do too. Um, yeah. And we take a lot of joy in being present and listening to each other. And I think really at the end of the day that's not just good for D, D. that's just good for humanity in general right it goes yeah. back to that humankind be both stuff that we're always talking about which isn't just a saying like i'm trying to actively put that into practice constantly thank you jeff for making that a thing for us um but it, it's it's that right like if the world as a whole could just listen and be present with one another and have and find joy in that um a lot of the world's problems, I think, would be solved faster than they're currently being solved. Uh, sure. So, uh, I know I could use more of that in our in our real world. Um, all right, let's check. I did not check the Discord for any more questions, but let me do that real quick. Uh, any? Do you have any questions for me, Carrie? I know. To, sorry, to put you on the spot like that, but do you have any questions for me? Um, what's gonna happen next? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so let me just uh, play it out there. So um. I'm kidding. Um, yeah, let me let me think about that. I feel like I ask you so many questions already. Like you do, but that's on okay. and off screen, that yeah. I feel like I kind of get them all answered. I mean, you guys have heard me in the community. <laughs> like I'll full on just ask just ridiculous questions all the time. So yeah. Um. 
Well, I think you know that you're going to a cave. Uh, I think you know that. And I think you know that, that cave is comprised of obsidian and full of glowworms. I think that's what you know. I mean, it um, kind of sounds like a wonderful dream, doesn't it? I know yeah. that we're, it's kind of scary, but also, like, how wonderful. Like, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, like, when I visualize it in my own head, it's yeah. like... It I sounds love beautiful. That. Yeah, that's what I was hoping people would get. Like, it looks like a starry sky, but you're in a cave and you're looking upwards. And yeah, I my descriptions. I need to work more on even more on those uh, to get. No, to, your to descriptions are uh, like top notch. Like, I'm I literally am like, why hasn't Ron written like ten novels by now? Like, it's just it's beautifully laid out. Thank you. Anyway. I work really hard on those and have been in this last arc. I've really been like, you know what? My goal for myself is to get more descriptive here because I know we have a podcast and I want those who listen to podcasts to really get that description. Um, and uh, so I've been working really hard on that. So thank you very much for saying yeah. that. Yeah. Can I answer um, this question from Phil Sure, Waffle? yeah, absolutely. I was Do just about Phil to get to it, but yes, go right ahead. Yes, it says, Carrie, can you share now that you're, you, you've you been exposed to this for a fair amount of time now, can you share something you've learned about yourself? Um, I... I think that um, the thing that sticks out to me, honestly, is, well, I can always be a better listener um, and I can always be a better note taker and I'm getting better at that. But the other thing that sticks out to me is there was that moment um, in in the first chapter of campaign two where toward the end where where we were having that um, uh, the group was trying to either make the deal with Vailshin, uh to time travel basically or or like portal to jump travel, closer to, to jump to yeah to the hanging gardens yeah yeah and and this sort of disconnect with um coco and saint yeah the fighting for that mm -hmm. was really invigorating and also really frustrating and something i learned about myself was i walked away from that i had to do a lot of writing and i was like what part of this is me my frustration as a person as a player and what part of this is like Coco's frustration. And I don't know that I had ever felt that. So I don't know if that's exactly an answer to your question of something that can be learned, but I think it definitely opened me up to, Oh, it, there, there is a difference between those two. And it's like a boundary with myself that I'm like, Oh, okay. 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 Wow. That's really interesting that you can kind of only really find out from getting into those conflicts yeah. that do spark a lot of change and and decisions yeah. um and it's really interesting because then you really find out what you're fighting for right. um versus i think kind of coco up to that point was like definitely instinct driven but you know not necessarily kind of just going with the flow mm -hmm. but um in that moment i definitely was like oh wow yeah i really this is becoming clearer to myself just what I fight for like as a person and then what I fight for as like a character. Um, so I don't know. Really finding the up. boundaries between you and Coco. Uh -huh. Yeah. I can relate to that as Ugo too, because so much of who I was, was put into Ugo. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, you had, to, I had to find like, there were real, it became very clear to me early on because I, we'd get into certain emotional situations. And then I, the next couple of days I would have similar emotional like reactions in my own life. And I'll be like, well, okay, is this me still in the Ugo mindset? Or is this uh -huh. the part that I brought into Ugo? So it was very interesting sort of um, introspective, retrospective kind of uh, 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 work. Um, sorry, my dog just coughed. Are you okay over there? He's like, I'm just coughing. <laughs> she, she was licking the carpet. And oh. got a hair in her mouth. That's like you do. Like you do when you're a dog. Um, <clears throat> uh, karma, they love you. Um, so <laughs> uh, it, it was very interesting for me to sort of have to do that um, afterwards. You know, like, okay, this is Ugo. This is not Ron. Uh, and this is Ron. This is not Ugo. Um, and it's. It, I think that's any character that you play for a very long time that you get very connected to, right? I learned that in LARPing. I, I don't know, Carrie, have you ever been LARPing? I have not, well, have I? No, no? not technically. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's something I learned in like doing that once a month for a weekend 
for from like Friday night at midnight until Sunday at 4 p.m. You are this other character. So, oh, wow. you know, one of the main things that was always talked about is like keep it in play, um, which, of course, can also be used by people in a toxic way, like anything. But in this case, I always took it as what you're talking about, which is be present and listen um, as a character, like listen as the character. Uh, mm. and respond as that character mm -hmm. but then after you know going home and getting ready for work on monday was always sort of jarring uh because you're you're transitioning from this other character who has different concerns and different worries and uh, and those emotional contexts come become a thing that you sort of have to wor learn how to to sort of drive yourself into back into the real world with your own real uh issues and and emotions yeah, um, so. I don't know if the community has seen Jury Duty yet, but I was watching that and I was like, oh my gosh, I understand this in such a different way than I maybe would have before. Um, but it was like, oh my gosh, they had to live in those characters for weeks. Yep. I mean, right. they did have rehearsal where they were out of, in and out a little Still, bit, but, but pretty like, much. Yeah. And, and it was really like, oh wow, I wonder how they're doing boundary wise, because it's also... You know, it's a social experiment, that yeah. whole thing. So, well, yeah. and I really think that this is sort of, you know, what we do is a type of social experiment, right? This is sure. newer to the world. And, you know, I have, we, we talk about this sometimes, especially as in influencers and streamers as a whole about parasocial relationships, especially mm. with our, with our uh, communities. Um, and it's, it's been very interesting to me. You know, I have close relationships with people that would start as fans. Like that's never would have never had that before and it's very interesting sort of to to learn what the boundaries are and to understand and and, and come to really appreciate people uh, and and the boundaries that they need as well as the boundaries that you realize you need it's it's very um introspective and to me it's been very helpful in learning yeah. things about life uh, yeah um so farewell has another question for you carrie uh, okay. what has been the hardest part about diving into role play RPG, the D and D world. What has been the hardest for you? <clears throat> um, feeling good enough. You know what I mean? Just sort of like I think everybody at the table is like so amazing, and it's funny because, you know, D and D as a whole, it feels like this. We are those characters but we're also people and we're commenting because we're having fun with each other like friends would do it at a table playing D&D. &D. So it's, uh, you're going in and out of yourself and this character. And so I often am like, oh my gosh, am I not clicking into, like getting to know this other character? Because I'm like such a spectator and a fan of everybody <laughs> that I just am having such a, a wonderful time with everybody that I, I think it's just feeling like good enough to be at that table with those people in those moments, being able to hold enough space for them and, and, uh, and be a good play partner. Well, I yeah. can tell you from my experience, <laughs> you are a wonderful play partner and your ability oh, to you. improvise is top notch. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but it's also important for you to learn that about yourself, right? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can only hear that yeah. so much before you have to like, because I, I deal with the same thing. Like, am I worthy of this seat? Like, am I worthy of being here? You know, and that's my constant worry and sort of this yeah. imposter syndrome that I talk about a little bit. Um, and so it's been it's been helpful hearing from all of you, the cast, as well as the community. Be like, no, this is good. Because um, it gives me a little bit more ammo to use against my own imposter syndrome. It's like, no, here's examples of why I, you know, am deserving of this seat. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but then it becomes about like making sure that I'm continuing to do the work to constantly feel like I deserve the seat. You know what I mean? Like not letting it, not letting my work slack at all, like really trying sure. to, to, to be um, sure. in it and, and, and accountable. So. Well, and I think everybody has those feelings. I, I tend to try to think of them as imposter thoughts so that it feels like, cause thoughts come and go. Yeah. They flow. Fair. And so um, they're not there forever. It's for me personally, I, I try not to think of that as like a syndrome or like yeah, something that is like there to stay that I'm always going to have to deal with. Um, but it did make me feel better not to like last um, Josephine out there. But I think it was after our first episode with her, she had mentioned she was like, oh, my gosh, I was watching some stuff back. And I was like she was being critical of herself 
about not being in play enough because she was like watching us. And I was like, oh, okay, well this just happens to everybody then. <laughs> Cause she's been playing D and D since she was like in diapers. So like, you know, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I absolutely can, can relate to that for sure. Um, yeah. But what I, one of the things I really sort of helps me with that is like, when we are in a group of friends, for example, sometimes mm -hmm. we just watch because we're not mm -hmm. the focus of the attention. And mm -hmm. I think that's totally normal and acceptable and part of being in a group. It's more of being present and listening. So I always take it as that is where, uh, but I get it. Cause you're also like, but I'm not, I'm watching as Ron right now, not as Ugo or as the DM. Like I should be watching as these people. Uh, I totally can relate to that, but mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's good to find some, some, and I think we have, we were talking about this before the show started, like a lot of things in common between all of us. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's very helpful in what, in what we're doing. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, just, if you hadn't read it, but uh, there are a bunch of people out there that are like, we absolutely love you. We're a big fan of you. Uh, having you at the t table has been amazing. Uh, and then not a crit Aww. fail saying that they will fight our imposter syndromes and thoughts. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I, we Thanks, appreciate guys. that. I really appreciate, appreciate that. that. Thank you. You're you guys are the best. We do have the best game. <sighs> we really do. <laughs> uh, yeah. We have from day one. And I, I really appreciate all of you out there in the community yeah. for all that you do. Uh, and then Fail Waffle has one question. One last question for me. Um, Ron, biggest thing you've learned about yourself in this campaign, because this is not your first rodeo. <laughs> uh, the yeah, thank you. You're right. It's not my first rodeo, uh, and one thing that I really pride myself on is constantly learning uh, and constantly making myself better in some way, even in the smallest amount. Um, I'm a firm believer in that. If you're not growing, then you're not living. Um, and so, uh, for me, it has been. Um, I learned that uh, I tend to want to take control of things sometimes um just to sort of because you're the dm you get used to it right especially old school dming where it's like oh y'all are just reacting to these things that i throw you um for me it's been very interesting and like i'm learning to just let things exist as they exist not try to like well that's actually wrong not wrong that's actually you're remembering that incorrectly or uh, you know, that kind of stuff, just letting all of that go and live and let the thing dice lie where they lie. Um, I'm constantly working on that. Um, and I think the biggest one for me has been that has been just let it be. Uh, in fact, I, I love the Beatles. And so that's one of the things I constantly sing in my head when I feel that way to sort of like as a, as a tool to remind me to do that is just let it be, let it live, let it live the way that it lives nothing is perfect it's okay if it's not perfect in fact life is wonderful because it is not perfect so let those things be isn't it interesting too i mean i just i i'm i'm hearing what you're saying and there's part of me that is like thinking about even at the table how many times like i've had to like say what has happened and i'm remembering it differently i mean that is like human nature that is how the world is working that's it's a big old game of telephone and we're all remembering it differently because mm -hmm. we're we're ingesting it in such a different way so it is really what an interesting exercise and and a good thing for me to remember too because i often get stuck on those details where i'm like oh my gosh i'm gonna remember it wrong and somebody in the community is gonna be like that's not how that happened or that's not what was said but it is interesting to think like just that exercise of letting it be characters and people and you know every everybody in the world like remembers things differently yep yeah yeah and the more and more i learn about the human experience especially on a scientific level the more and more i realize like you know so much of this is just hallucination right like <laughs> i mean i'm not even joking like yeah. so much of our reality is just shared hallucination uh, there's it, it, it's it's in, especially when you look at it from the scientific side of things but then that doesn't make it any different than the way we experience it right it's still a very like chaotic and 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 almost maddening thing at times uh, but it's it's such a fascinating thing for me to experience especially that's why having friends that are willing to talk about those things and like mm -hmm. um, have those difficult conversations that sometimes are uncomfortable has been very helpful for me because it's like okay I'm not the only one who, who, who worries about this stuff. I'm not the only one who thinks about these things. Uh, 
not that I ever thought I, I did, but hearing it out loud from someone else is, is way different than like, I know other people think about that. Um, and so D and D has always been very helpful with me in that where, you know, role play really helps, uh, understand and process things. Um, which is why I think we see it used in therapy a lot, right? Like role plays used in therapy a lot. Uh, it's used in a variety of different types of relationships. And I think that's, it speaks volumes about its usefulness to the human mind. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Fourth and back says, I honestly think having a new player on the show each time is almost a must now. It's great. I know the game uh, and can't play, haven't in 25 years, and having her be there is perfect. I, I assume they mean you. Um, <laughs> in the West Wing, Donna served this purpose. She'd ask questions and then and let uh, Aaron, she'd ask questions and then that, that let yeah. Aaron Sorkin explain the political thinking for the audience. It's jokingly called Teladonna instead of Donatello. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, not a correct fail. This is why I think, you know, people talk about how AI is going to replace a lot of us. Uh, not in storytelling, never. An AI can't experience things like you and I can, at least not yet. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then when it does, it's no longer an AI, it's a sentient per per thing. Um, but that's where two people are different, right? Like, I can let something write something for me, but if I did not put my own experience into it, it's not going to have any connection or feeling from anyone. Uh, and so, for me, it's that. It's Storytelling is just... It's why it's been the thing since the dawn of, you know, when we all crawled out of the caves is that is this is my experience of what those shadows on the wall meant, right? Uh, to use mm -hmm. to use the cave analogy uh, since we're in a cave. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's that it's I don't know. Uh, you know, I think there's a demon out there, but really I'm just basing that off of a 2D image I see on the on the on the cave wall from from fire from the aspects of fire. So it's, uh, for me, that's what I get really into. It's like, oh, right, okay, this is all, uh, you can really drive things together and really learn things this way from perspectives, right? Just perspective. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's what I get all the time. And what I love about doing this is perspective shift. Like my understanding of the world around me changes because of the things that I experience with the people that I experience it with. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys are uh, the best. You really are. Also, I want to say your little—I don't know if they're ears or or <laughs> jingle balls or what they are—but those are those are cute. I love that. Thanks. I love that you they're put just those like on there. soft puffs. One time I got them at the store because I was like texturally, they calmed me down for oh, some yeah. reason. Oh, yeah. But then also I broke my headphones, so I was like, well, now I kind of got to cover that up. And then I was like, well, I should just make ears. <laughs> I learned that. Um, I learned that in the pandemic, uh, one of the one of my customers during the pandemic bought a bunch of the the D and D you know the miniatures that I make and sell. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things they identified, they they sent us like a a review, a very kind review, and they were saying like they they love these things because the detail you get, you can there's a lot of ridges and bumps, and so they're tactilely mm -hmm. um, important and helpful, especially for those who are autistic. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. what they were buying them for. And I was like, I never had considered that before that of like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's like just having this to like to play with it can help calm uh, individuals. Yeah. I'm um, a big texture person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Heather is a big texture person, too. Yeah. Um, wait, wait. Somebody said um, Newtonia09 says, I want to play a character that is just a trope and its subversion is that there is no subversion at all. Is this a good idea? <laughs> um, I mean... <laughs> I think that's hard. That's really hard for me to answer because it depends on what the purpose of having no subversion would be, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you can give a real good story reason of why they are not subversive would be important. You know, I think everyone is, I don't think there's anyone out in this world who's subversive. Well, okay, maybe that's not true. I'm sure there are people who are subversive just to be subversive. Uh, attention seekers, I imagine, are a lot like that. Um, or people who, who need a lot of attention in that way. Um, but I don't know. Subversion seems to be like human nature, right? Like we all subvert things in some way or form. So I don't know. That's a, that's a hard one. It's so open-ended. I don't know how to answer it. What did Morgan say? Oh yeah. Have you been to Echo Park? LOL. <laughs> what? That is such an LA thing. That is an LA thing. <laughs> Uh, I, that one went over my head. I don't know. 
have you been to, have, have you been yeah. you've been to Echo Park? I think there's a lot of interesting people that go to Echo Park. <laughs> I, I assume, uh, and they're subversive just to be subversive is what Morgan says. I see, I see. Yeah, a trend. Yeah. They go there to be trendily subversive. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. I gotcha. Um, a lot oh. of things do happen at Echo Park. <laughs> That is New, the truth. Newtonia clarified. Like a noble who's not really dejected or haughty or hates themselves, just a noble who really wants to be a good example of a noble. Um Yeah. I I watch the great. If you have not yet watched the great Newtonia, watch the great. I think that's a perfect example of maybe what you're talking about there. Um A classic trope. Sounds like a paladin. Yeah, paladins are new too though. They're like that's the some of the things that have changed with paladins have made them less of the like, I'm just going to be the good guy for good guy's sake. Um, there's more um, minutia to it now, right? Like, especially given the oaths that you make, because you can make an oath to be a good guy and certainly can do that. But you can also make an oath to like, no, I want to, I want to bring evil to this world or I want to bring, um, you know, I want to, I want to make more undead or, or that kind of stuff make for really good bad guys that have a purpose that aren't just, I'm a bad guy for a bad guy's sake. Um, so I think those are, but classic tropes work. Captain America, Superman. Although I think Captain America is a, is a better classic trope than Superman is. If you ask me, at least Captain yeah. America has, has flaws. Superman has no flaws, <laughs> no weaknesses. Um, I love the yeah. speed. It's so fun to see it like is. all the co I love it. <laughs> the comments, our community comments I know. are so good. Sometimes I sometimes when we're especially during like intermission, I'll be like, "Man, I wonder what chat has been saying." Uh, now I actually have Heather Heather watches chat when we play and so afterwards I'm always getting like a any interesting interactions in chat like uh, you know, that kind of stuff to to sort of help me gauge things that are fun um, for the for the community. So uh, all right, one last question, and then we're going to wrap this up because we are at one o'clock. Not a crit fail says, "When you started playing D and D, did you ever think, oh, I am this class in real life, and has that changed as you kept going, as you kept playing, have kept playing?" Huh. Um. No, I don't think I've ever really compared myself to a class, and I, I assume you mean like the classic trope of that class like what that class is supposed to supposed to feel like i think maybe sometimes hmm no i've never done that how about how about you carrie well i think it's like a it's a real gift to be a new player who doesn't know anything about anything <laughs> because True. you know i can say like i'm a wood elf ranger but i'm like you know, there are many choices you can make. You're still just, I don't know. You get to make a lot of character choices that aren't necessarily tropey, or maybe they are tropey, or maybe you're bad at that thing. <laughs> like maybe it comes into play. Not at all. Um, you know, I don't know. There, It's, it's, uh, I think it's, it's actually one of the things that has made me a little bit self-conscious about creating other D, D characters is because so many people in the community are like oh my gosh you're a paladin well this means that you're this 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 and this and i'm like oh i i really long to have that knowledge i think of like these different characters i mean even watching the D, &D movie i was like oh i know somehow i'm missing some things because of these characters I would hear people say like, oh, this they were playing such blah, 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 whatever. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> I would yeah. like Google it. I'd be like, oh yes, 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 okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it almost feels a little bit like a, a ticket to entry that some, that's part of my imposter thought where I'm like, I just don't know enough about these or I can't hold on to like why that, you know, class or subclass or whatever is seen as this thing as a starting point even. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, as I'm around it more. Yeah. And I think that comes out. just, you, you know, someone like me, I've been playing this for so long. Like it's, it mm. becomes a second nature thing because I've just gone, I've DM so many times that it's just that, that kind of uh, thing. But yeah, it's interesting to see. Cause I know, you know, Heather talks about that too. Like I introduced her to D and D when we first met uh, mm. and now she's been playing for about six or seven years. 
she went and saw the D we went and saw the D and D movie together. Uh, and there were times where I'm like, I'm like whispering to her why that was an inside joke. Um, uh -huh. and like m half of them, she was like that one. I, that one I got this one. I got. And <laughs> it was, you know, interesting to her to, to see that sort of dichotomy of like, I captured each individual, like tiny inside joke and were like Easter eggs of joy for me. But then also seeing that other, other people found joy in that, but in a different way. Um, yeah. And I think that speaks really strongly to the writers of that, of that. Um, yeah. Of that. I still do wish there was maybe one more moment during battle where there was just a little, it was more, it was meta where it was more just like they stop and they're like, they, they do the move and they, they stab and then they just wait there. <laughs> they like stop <laughs> their place so that somebody else can do their yeah. thing. I yeah. just wanted that for a second. You wanted, you wanted the, the breakdown of combat rules. Yeah. Uh, sort of displaying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah um, sure. Anyway. Yeah. Um, the um, one part I really yeah. liked was spell casting concentration. The, the aspect of concentration was brought into the, one of the combats. Um, oh, I was like, I'll have to go back they and lost watch concentration it. on that spell. Uh. I love that. Uh, so that was really, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, like Morgan said, I hold like on. What, uh, what do I do I want to do with my bonus action? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, so do I have a bonus action? Like, do I have a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doug yeah. in Texas says they think I would be a multi-class barbarian bard. I, uh, I, I think a bard. A bard, for sure. Barbarian, bard? Uh, bard, for sure. That I, you know, the classic entertainer. I like to sing, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Barbarian, I'm a big dude, so I get that sometimes people think I'm a dangerous individual, and I'm sure if I really push myself, you're such that a way, lover, though. A you're such a kitten. person. I am. I am a. I am a puppy. I'm a puppy. <laughs> is what I am. Um, but you know, I have. I've as I've mentioned before, I've, I've been a bouncer. I've bounced at strip clubs, so like I know what it means to appear to be you know, strong and, and dangerous. But I would I would say I'm probably more on the clerical side of things or maybe wizardly side of things, where for me it's about understanding um, the essence of what's happening around me to, to find where I fit within it. Um, because, and I think that goes well with a bard, right? Like a bard is, I love the joy of life, I love entertaining, and that helps me understand where I fit in the grand picture in this moment. Um, so yeah, I would say probably uh, Bard Wizard is probably more of what I am, for sure. Mm. I like rules. I like to know what they are, to, so I can break them. Uh, I know I like science. I like how things work and understanding that. And in a real weird way, how, learning how something works, especially if it's like medicinal, me medical, or something wrong with someone, learning the details of how it functions and why it functions that way brings me not joy, but helps me like calm down about it. Mm. which is the opposite of many other people I've met. Like, I don't want to know anything about it. Like, I, this is just hard for me to, like, concentrate on. Like, no, I want to know about, like, why, you know, why my mental health is the way it is or what lupus is about, you know, because my mom struggles with it. You know, that really helped me as a kid. Understanding what it was and its parameters helped me sort of slot it into existence. So it's definitely a wizard sort of thing. By the way, I love what Jafrika said. I'm currently playing a rogue that learned how to learned law in jail to represent herself, and now she's just finding loopholes before stabby stabbing. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's brilliant. great. That's I great. love that so much. That is. Great. Um. Anyway, <laughs> well, thanks. But. Thanks for this. This has been fun. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. It has been, Carrie. It's it's been so wonderful to speak with you, as it always is. Um, I love hanging out with on. you. I love hanging out with you too. I hope we get to do it even more uh, uh, soon. Uh, well, yes. we'll do it tomorrow. Like tomorrow uh, night. For sure. Like tomorrow <laughs> night at 6 p.m. Yeah. right here on twitch.tv slash the dungeon run. So make yeah, sure you not guys to miss want to hang out with us. Come, come hang out with us. Please come <laughs> hang out with us. And uh, hey, I've got a new task. I've got homework for all of you viewers out there. Ooh. This week, tell one person about the dungeon run. And try to tell one person that you've never told about the dungeon run. About the dungeon run. <laughs> Uh, please, uh, we find that the best, the best, uh, recurring viewers come from word of mouth, just like any business. So please, uh, get the word out there, let people know. And Hey, if you know someone who used to watch the show in season one, and it's sort of gotten behind, cause I've actually gotten a couple of messages recently about people like I'm catching up and Holy crap. Season two is so interesting. So do us a favor. Let people know that we're here, still doing our thing, that we are trying our best to make the show even better than it's always been, upgrading things, bringing new content 
to the TTRPG space, uh, new faces, all of that kind of stuff. Let someone know. Tell someone about us. And as always, uh, thank you for your time, your donations, your patronage. We appreciate all of you. Without any of you, none of this would be uh, worth it, let alone exist. So thank you so much for everything that you guys do. And as always, uh, I will... I almost closed this out, but I got to find who we're going to raid because that's important for oh, us okay, to do. Okay. We are a community and we need to make sure we're raiding somebody uh, so that we can say hello to them and make them feel loved as well. So let's raid. Let's see who's on right now. You know what? We're going to raid Modifius, guys. If you, do know, if you don't know Modifius, uh, right now they're doing Star Trek. They do some, case, they do some um, Fallout. If you ever played the Fallout RPG, they do that as well. Uh, lovely people working over there at Modifius. So we will, we will raid Modifius. Give them a hello from us. And we'll see you tomorrow night here. Twitch.tv slash Dungeon Run at 6 p.m. I'm Ron Ogden. Has joined me. Carrie Lee Cartwright has joined me today. And uh, we will see you soon. And as always, humankind, be, be both! both. Mwah. <laughs> Bye.